All right, folks, let's do this. I'm going to be reinstalling my Linux partitions in this video. And if you have no context as to what this video is about, watch the previous video or go to Medium and read the blog I did about leaving Linux for a while. Basically, the publishing gig I was doing is over with, and now I can focus my efforts back on YouTube and, you know, stuff like this. So if you didn't catch it in the bootloader back there, I'm going to be installing Fedora 28 with KDE. Now, if you're like me, you've heard only bad things about KDE on Fedora, about how it crashes and how the packages are old and stuff like that. But I've actually been using it in a VM for a while, and it seems pretty solid. Now, Fedora 28 was released a couple weeks ago, I think. Now, I don't remember if I've ever done a partitioning video or featured any of my partitioning in videos or anything. What I typically do is use my SSD as my root drive, and my one terabyte drive is my entire home directory. Now my SSD is only 128 or 120 gigabytes, I can't remember, so it's not that big, but it is fast and that's what I need out of my root drive. So once I'm done configuring my partition setup, I've got my SSD as my root drive, my one terabyte as my home directory. Both drives are using ext4 because I've only had bad experiences with other file systems like XFS and B I haven't really had a bad experience with BTRFS or whatever that other one is, but um, yeah, XFS has crashed on me twice and uh, I will never use it again. But yeah, it's done, so let's boot in. And let's just skip to the login screen. It is the basic KDE login screen. It uses a simple display manager, I think is what it's called. It uses a Fedora specific theme though, so that's cool. The initial login for KDE usually takes some time. This one took a outrageous amount of time to be honest, but we eventually got there and there's the Fedora background and we've got a basic KDE desktop, so that's cool. So I'm not going to go through each step of customizing my desktop because there's a lot of it and honestly I don't do it all in like one fell swoop. So I'll do a lot of it up front and then I'll jump to the very end and you can see what my desktop looks like and my backgrounds that I choose and stuff like that. Yeah, let's get to customizing. So there's a lot of tweaks that I do to my desktop and that's one of the reasons why I like KDE so much is there's so much that you can do with it. The default KDE start menu, start bar, or whatever you want to call it, is uh, very silly. I don't like the really big, thick one, so I use the alternative one, which is like a really simple launcher. It's very similar to the one that XFCE has, but it's a little more full-featured. And like any good distro, right after you install it, there are, of course, updates, 164 of them. So let me just go ahead and get an update going while I'm doing my customization, save a little time. And while that's going, let's dive into the system settings because this is where most of the customization happens. So I'm not sure what's happening here with these icons. They're clearly messed up. Like the user manager looks fine, but look and feel and screen locking are just like squares. So believe it or not, Fedora actually has its own theme. Uh, it's really weird and I don't know uh, who uses this, but uh, I really like the Breeze Dark theme. So that's what we're gonna go with. Now, I've always thought it was weird that they pair the Breeze Dark cursor theme with the Breeze Dark theme, because now your cursor is dark against a dark background. It always seemed weird. So with the Dark theme, I always use the Breeze Snow mouse cursor. So the next customization I make is probably a pretty controversial one, because it is copying one of the older Windows 10 themes. Now, this window decoration theme is called Windows K10, and as you saw, it's actually a pretty highly rated one but it tries to mimic one of the old Windows 10 themes. It's changed since then, but I think this theme is really nice. The Windows K10 theme adds this arbitrary line around the windows, and it's not flashy, it's not too loud. And I don't know, I didn't like it at first, but I just kind of got used to it, and now when I use a theme without it, it's hard for me to tell if a window is in the foreground or background, so I really like it. So a really important thing to disable if you want your KDE to be as performant as possible is file searching and plasma search. So file searching can be really detrimental to your performance because there's constantly this indexing happening on your hard drives. And if you have a slow hard drive, then suddenly your whole computer can slow to a crawl. It doesn't happen for everybody, but I've seen it happen to me. So I don't really use file searching anyway, so I have no need for it. And I turn all these plugins off in Plasma Search because I don't search for things like desktop session or like spell check or unit conversion. I, I've never searched for those ever. And I don't want them cluttering up my search results. 
Another thing I really like about KDE is how you can choose your background services and when they start. Very, very similar to the Windows services or component services. I can't remember what they call it. But there's a number of default services that start, such as Bluetooth and touchpad, and I don't have either of those, so I have no need for those services. All right, just a few more things in the system settings section, and we will be done customizing the look and feel of KDE for this video. For input, I like NumLock turned on at startup, double click for files and folders, and I disable the acceleration profile. So that's pretty easy to do with KDE. Next up, and this is probably the single most important thing if you want solid performance and reliability on KDE, disable the damn compositor. Seriously, if you have crashes on KDE, especially with NVIDIA drivers and things, just turn off the compositor. Sure, you'll lose some like the fading and sliding windows and stuff, but KWIN won't crash as much. And the last thing I do for appearance is customizing the taskbar or bottom bar, I don't know what you call it. Now a hilarious thing is as I was customizing this thing, KWIN freaking crashed. Now keep in mind, I had only disabled the compositor on startup, so as I was recording it was still running. I find that the majority of these plasma crashes are caused by the compositor, so when you turn it off you just won't see these anymore. And let's just skip to the end so I can show you the finished product. Now obviously there are things that have changed, I'll go through it one by one. The first thing I want to show you is the console. It's probably my favorite part of the distro. It's probably the thing I use the most, to be honest. Now, Fedora doesn't really come with any sort of like text highlighting in the console, and I'll show you how I put that in there. But the actual theme or the appearance itself is somewhat custom. You can edit your profile and then go to the appearance tab. And by default, it uses Linux colors, which is really ugly. If you change it to dark pastels, it looks fantastic. And I don't recall what the default font is, but it was really bad. I'm using Consolas, which is, I think, based on the Microsoft Monospace font. I, I don't remember. There are a few really good ones. Hack is another great one, but I didn't have that one. Now, the text coloring came from this app called Fetty. Now, I'm going to do a video in the future about this particular app. It is like the best, probably most underrated app available for Fedora. It's just amazing. But if you go to the Tweaks tab, Fancy bash prompt, that's what you're looking for. This app is just awesome. Look forward to a video about it in the future. Then the next thing I want to show you is Dolphin. I don't do a whole lot of customizing here anymore. I used to go like bananas with it, but I like to keep it simple. I add a folder called bin, and this is where I keep things like app images or startup scripts. Right now I only have one, and that's an overclock script. So I have KDE set up to run this overclock script so I don't have to like manually overclock it through the NVIDIA panel. It just happens. Now I know somebody has already asked about my background, and will I give you the background? No. There are apps that you can use on this video to figure out where the background is, do a reverse image search, you can figure it out. But where I find my backgrounds is Reddit. There are tons of subreddits with really cool wallpapers. I like this particular artist a lot, and I use their backgrounds a lot in videos because they really stand out in the thumbnail. And they're just gorgeous. They're really great to look at. So if you're looking for really great wallpapers like this, just go to Reddit. You'll find them. And the very last thing I want to show you are the fonts I use. Now, the fonts that you choose for your desktop make a huge impact. I realized this when I first used Pop! OS. And if you've never used Pop! OS, you absolutely should. It feels unlike anything you've used before. And I think that is by and large due to the fonts. For some reason, Fira Sans translates so well into a desktop. It looks fantastic. If I remember, the default font for KDE is Deja Vu Sans, I think, and that's like one of the worst fonts ever. But if you change it over to Fira, my god, it looks incredible. So yeah, that's gonna wrap this video up. Wow, this video went long. I didn't expect it to go so long. I actually had a bunch of other clips that I was gonna use to kind of explain like the apps I, I installed, but this is already way longer than I like my videos to be, so I'm gonna end it here. I'm definitely gonna do a video on Fetty in the future, and uh, I had another idea for a video, something based on this, but I forgot what it was. At any rate, I'm gonna stop it here. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, support it through Patreon or Brave Payments or whatever you like to do. I appreciate all of your support, and thanks for watching.